Welcome to Israel Now News. I'm Yochanan El Rome. And I'm Aaron Viner. In our top story, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu was among the first of national leaders around the world to offer congratulations to U.S. President Donald Trump following his inauguration on Friday. Officials in Jerusalem said they are looking forward to working with the new administration and strengthening the unbreakable bond between Jerusalem and Washington. Turning to the recent Paris conference on the Middle East, which Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu described as rigged against the Jewish state. As expected, the 70 countries attending the one-day summit issued a final joint declaration reaffirming support of the two-state solution and calling on Israel and the Palestinians to refrain from any unilateral actions that could further inflame the conflict. Jerusalem refused to send an envoy to Paris, having dismissed the gathering as futile and only further distancing prospects of peace. Despite his nation's initiative, ahead of the event, even French President Francois Hollande played down any likely progress by agreeing with Israel's leader that only direct talks between Jerusalem and Ramallah can help to resolve the impasse. A spokeswoman for newly inducted United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres said he would like to meet with U.S. lawmakers as soon as possible following threats to cut American funding to the world body until it repeals Resolution 2334 against Israeli building policies. Republican Ted Cruz, who jointly submitted legislation in the Senate with Lindsey Graham, said he was particularly angered that the Security Council resolution declared that Jerusalem is not a part of Israel. A similar measure was also introduced in the U.S. House of Representatives. American taxpayer money makes up the largest single contribution to the U.N. each year, funding 22 percent of its $5.4 billion core budget, in addition to 28 percent of its $7.9 billion peacekeeping missions. The new U.N. chief has already held talks with U.S. President Donald Trump after he disparaged the world body earlier this month on Twitter. In related news, Israel is going to withdraw $6 million in funding to the United Nations in 2017 in further protest of its evident bias against the Jewish state. Jerusalem's UN ambassador Danny Danone said it is unreasonable and absurd for his nation to financially support agencies that openly operate against Israel, particularly several whose intent is nothing but the spreading of incitement and propaganda. The Israeli mission also announced plans to advance additional initiatives aimed at shutting down such activities now that Donald Trump has been inaugurated U.S. president. American involvement in the Israeli-Palestinian peace process may soon be reinvigorated following the appointment of Jared Kushner as the next U.S. mediator. The president's 36-year-old son-in-law is a Jewish real estate magnate who has been described as being one of Trump's most trusted advisors. Israeli officials are optimistic that the new American leader will implement many of his campaign pledges, which are viewed as very supportive of the Jewish state. Guards working for the Islamic Wafq tried to evict a veteran Israeli archaeologist for using the term Temple Mount during his history lecture to a multi-faith group of American students from the University of California who were touring the holy site. Dr. Gabriel Barkai was repeatedly interrupted by Arabs when he used the biblical name, revered by Jews and Christians, to refer to the place where both temples once stood. One Islamic guard also angrily denied any Jewish connection to the area. The Waf is administered by Jordan and staffed by local Palestinians. The incident is not without precedent. Jews and Christians who come to the holy site are frequently harassed by Muslim gangs who are paid to intimidate visitors. The Syrian army is claiming that Israeli artillery fired missiles at a major military air base outside of Damascus. The Arab officials didn't mention any casualties, but said that the rockets caused a fire. Residents in southwest suburbs of the Syrian capital reported hearing an explosion, and video footage obtained by Reuters showed flames leaping from parts of the compound. The air base is used by the elite Republican Guard forces who serve the regime of Syrian President Bashar al-Assad. Israel has neither confirmed nor denied the report. The FBI and Department of Homeland Security are assisting American Jewish community centers in bolstering security after 19 facilities in at least 11 different states were recently targeted by telephone bomb threats. All of the menacing calls are believed to have been placed from the same number by at least one individual or through the use of an automated robocall system. The threats forced several emergency evacuations from the community centers while police searched the premises. 
200 people ranging in age from preschoolers at a Jewish day school to senior citizens eating lunch were forced to seek shelter during one of the incidents in Wilmington, Delaware. No bombs were found at any of the locations, which also included Florida, Georgia, Maryland, New Jersey, New York, North Carolina, Pennsylvania, South Carolina, Tennessee, and as far west as California. FBI officials have declined to comment on the progress of the investigation to apprehend those responsible. There's shock and outrage in the West German city of Wuppertal after regional judges upheld a lower court ruling that the 2014 attempt by three Palestinian terrorists to burn down the city's synagogue was a justified expression of criticism against Israel. The verdict validated the Muslim defendants' claim to have thrown firebombs in attempts to raise awareness of the conflict raging between Gaza and Israel at that time. All three terrorists were given suspended sentences. Leading member of parliament, Volker Beck, blasted the court decision as alarming and stressed that the burning of a synagogue in Germany because of incidents in the Middle East can only be defined as anti-Semitism. The city's original synagogue was destroyed in a fire lighted by rioting Germans during the Nazi Kristallnacht pogrom in 1938. Michigan just joined the prestigious ranks of other U.S. states by passing legislation against the anti-Israel boycott, divestment and sanctions campaign. Governor Rick Snyder signed the law, making Michigan the 16th U.S. state to combat the hate movement and actively fight back against those who seek to discriminate against the Jewish state or harm its economy. Now, this amazing development in which a multidisciplinary team of Israeli scientists say that they've been able to use science to pinpoint the date of the biblical hero Joshua's epic battle. Joshua 10:12 tells us, the Lord delivered the Amorites before the children of Israel, and he said in the sight of Israel, Sun, stand still upon Gibeon, and you the moon in the valley of Ayalon. Researchers at the Ben-Gurion University of the Negev say that this passage is unique because it mentions both the sun and the moon. This indicates a total solar eclipse when all light is blocked by the moon's passing between the earth and the sun. Using data that was supplied by NASA, the Israeli experts were able to pinpoint the only regional eclipse of this kind during that era, which tells us not only that Joshua led the Israelites to victory on the 30th of October in the year 1207 before the Common Era, but that their victorious battle began precisely at 428 in the afternoon. The scientists' research paper on the topic has just been published in the most recent edition of the Beit Mikra Journal for the Study of the Bible and Its Word. Israel, the light unto the nations, today faces attack from more than just rockets and terrorism. Calls to boycott, sanction, and divest from Israel, known as BDS, are a form of economic warfare that you can help to prevent. The Israel Allies Foundation has launched a public service campaign called Defeat BDS, offering educational tools and other resources that you can use to stand with Israel and help make a difference. Just visit the easy-to-use website at www.defeatbds.org. That concludes the news portion of our show. Stay tuned for Ask the Source with Josh Reinstein. Hello and welcome to Ask the Source. I'm your host, Josh Reinstein, and we're here on a beautiful cloudy day in Jerusalem on our rooftop studio. My guest today is Dr. Lawrence Weinbaum. He's the Director General of the World Jewish Congress Israel Branch. Dr. Weinbaum, thank you for being on the show. Thank you very much for having me. Tell our viewers a little bit about what is the World Jewish Congress. The World Jewish Congress is an international Jewish organization that was established in 1936 as the voice of the Jewish people in all the different diaspora communities. It is today headed by Ambassador Ronald Lauder, who is undoubtedly someone well known to your viewers. So one of the issues that you guys work on is the remembrance of the Holocaust and keeping the memories of the six million Jews who were slaughtered in the Holocaust alive. Why is that so important? Well, the Holocaust was a seminal event in both Jewish and human history, and we believe it's something that can never be forgotten. It shapes who we are, and it will continue to shape who we are for the future. And there are many lessons to be learned from the Holocaust that uh, cannot be, cannot be uh, forgotten and can't be ignored. 
you know, you started this new initiative called We Remember. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, one of the most difficult things in trying to understand about the Holocaust is the enormity of this terrible crime. Uh, we speak about the destruction of six million men, women, and children, Jewish people from across the length and breadth of Europe. And there's always difficulty in conceptualizing uh, that number of people. It was once said, um, one death is a tragedy, a million is a statistic. And so we believe it's very important to try to bring home to people the message that every victim, every man, woman, and child who perished in the Holocaust was an individual. So what is the goal of the campaign? What could people do to get involved? Well, what we're trying to do is to encourage uh, people across the world, uh, Jews, Christians, people of other faiths, uh, to take the time to stand in front of a camera. It can be their own mobile, mobile phone. It can be a more standard camera and to have a photo of themselves with their friends or their family or their classmates or their uh, colleagues from work with the simple words we remember. You know, you, you work with the Jewish community around the world, but on this initiative you're actually appealing to the Bible-believing believing Christian community. Why is it important for Christians to get involved in this? Well, we want to reach out to the Bible-believing Christians who we see as tremendous allies and tremendous supporters of the Jewish people and of the Jewish state. And we believe that they have a particular sensitivity to the terrible tragedy that befell the Jewish people. And of course, uh, it's not something uh, that we can, we can dismiss. And that is the fact that, uh, sadly, uh, many people who were ostensibly people of Christian belief took an active role in the destruction of the Jewish people. You are the first, or one of the first, Jewish organizations to reach out to Christians, not just for campaigns or in general, but at the grassroots level, getting Christians and Jews to come together to stand for Israel, to stand for uh, Judeo-Christian values. Why did the World Jewish Congress take this sea change of a, a move in, in, in reaching out to this community in such force? Well, I think that it's clear that we were able to identify uh, much in common between the believing Christians and the Jews, and that is, first of all, uh, faith in God, uh, belief in the Bible, a commitment uh, to ensure the well-being of the Jewish people. And we understand, as I think very few others could understand, the fact that today the Christian communities in the Middle East, in this part of the world, which was in fact the cradle of Christianity, have come under an existential threat. And it's one of the great challenges of the modern age to stand with those imperiled Christians. And in fact, our president, Ronald Lauder, is probably the only Jewish leader who has taken an unequivocal stand in this issue and has committed our organization uh, uh, to stand in defense of the endangered Christians. You bring up a very good point. Ambassador Ronald Lauder is the first major Jewish leader to stand up and say we cannot let Christian genocide happen in the Middle East, in Africa. What are some of the steps that World Jewish Congress is taking to make sure this genocide is, is put in the spotlight and also that people understand that this is a major issue and we need to fight it? Well, we are trying to draw attention to the plight of Christians at whatever opportunities arise, and we are trying to create those opportunities in practically every meeting we have. And we have meetings with uh, men and women of influence across the world. We raise this issue and we draw to the attention particularly of countries that are ostensibly Christian, uh, whether they are in uh, Europe, North or South America, the fact that the roots of Christianity are in danger of being ripped out uh, at the source. Dr. Weimar, there are literally tens of millions of people watching this show. What message do you have for our viewing audience? First of all, we want to express our profound gratitude to all of you for your steadfast and unwavering support of the Jewish people in the land of Israel. Uh, I hope that you will all be blessed for what you're doing. Thank you, Dr. Weimar, for being on the show. And thank you for tuning in to Ask the Source. I'm your host, Josh Reinstein. Now back to the studio. Up next, the return to Zion with Karen Hayasod.
Shalom and welcome to the Return to Zion with Keren HaEsod. I'm Eliezer Moody Sandberg, World Chairman of Keren HaEsod United Israel Appeal, the leading official fundraising organization for the State of Israel. Due to the rise of anti-Semitism, the Jews of France are coming to Israel like never before. You will now witness the fulfillment of biblical prophecy. God bless you from Jerusalem. Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Both the departure from France and the reception at Ben Gurion Airport were colorful and festive events, full of hope for the future. The reception at Ben Gurion had the feel of a homecoming celebration with flags and greetings designed to convey to the Olim that they have come home and that everything possible would be done to guarantee a promising future for them and their children and to ease their absorption. It began with the receiving Israeli ID cards already at the airport and will continue with the help of a special program designed to streamline the bureaucratic process in the fields of employment, education, and housing. <laughs> אבל תחשבו כל אחד מהם מכם, סוגר מעגל של אלפיים שנה, עשרות דרות של סבים וסבתות שלכם, התפללו, לחמו, חלמו, ואתם עשיתם את זה. אתם זוכרים לפני שבועיים היינו בפריז, נפגשנו שם, נתן שירנסקי, אני, מודי זנדברג וכולם, ומה אמרנו? אנחנו נקבל אתכם בבית, הבית משותף של כולנו, מדינת ישראל. אני רוצה לברך אתכם בשם משפחת קרן היסוד העולמית. זה רגע מרגש עבורכם וגם עבורנו. המדינה הזאת שייכת לכולנו. לא משנה איפה אתה גר, כחלק מהעם היהודי, ישראל היא המולדת שלך. קרן היסוד מגייסת תרומות, ויחד עם הסוכנות היהודית, השותפה שלנו, ומשרד הקליטה, אנחנו עוזרים לחלום הציוני להתגשם. The Jewish community of France is the largest in Europe, numbering half a million Jews. On est des vrais sionistes, on adore Israël et que c'est pas par peur ou voilà, c'est vraiment par envie parce qu'on avait envie de vivre ici, on avait envie de vivre en Israël. Je suis très très ému et je ne réalise pas. Beaucoup de joie, une très très grande émotion. J'ai énormément les larmes aux yeux et j'espère que tout le monde pourra réaliser ce rêve un jour. Un projet de vie, ça fait depuis qu'on est marié, c'était notre projet de monter en Israël. Je trouve que c'est très impressionnant d'arriver dans un nouveau pays dans lequel on se dit on va arriver, on connaît entre guillemets personne, seul et au final. C'est impressionnant, impressionnant, parce qu'on n'est pas seul et euh, vraiment, c'est bon. Il n'y a que Israël pour faire ça, c'est vraiment, euh, voilà. Mesdames et messieurs, le Premier ministre de l'État d'Israël, M. Bibi Netanyahu. Bonjour tout le monde, bienvenue en Israël. Il y a une famille qui est très bien, 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 qui est אנחנו מעריכים את המעשה הציוני שעשיתם, שהוא גם מעשה אישי. הוא מעשה אישי גדול ומעשה לאומי גדול. To donate and get information, call us at 1-800-505-1665 or visit our website at www.khisrael.org. A while ago, I met with representatives of some mainline churches here in the Knesset. And I, I decided to start off by making them uncomfortable. I said to them, thank you. 
Without the support of your churches over a century ago, this state, this house, the Knesset, might not have existed. It was the representatives of these mainline churches who, in the 19th century, looked at the Bible and understood that the land of Israel belonged to the people of Israel and that the Jewish people should come home to their ancestral homeland and reestablish their state. Now these Christian leaders looked not only at what they called the Old Testament, but at the New Testament. And they knew that Jesus of Nazareth was a Jew living in his homeland. And moreover, all the figures in that New Testament, from Mary to John the Baptist to uh, the apostles, were all proud Jews living in their ancestral homeland. And therefore, I said to these Christian leaders today in the Knesset, thank you for your support. And then I questioned them. I questioned them, do you understand that in your condemnation of Israelis, Israelis living in their ancestral homeland in Judea and Samaria and in Jerusalem, that you're condemning them as settlers? Basically, you are denouncing the principal figures of your own faith. Jesus, according to the New Testament, was born in Bethlehem. That is where Mary and Joseph uh, traveled in order to give birth to their son. Today, according to these same mainline churches, Jesus, Mary, and Joseph would be settlers. John the Baptist, who lived near Jericho, would be a settler. He'd be illegitimate. He'd be denounced by these same churches that purport to revere them. We must rally around the realization that the land of Israel belongs to the people of Israel. And it has belonged to the people of Israel for 3,000 years. During the time of Abraham, during the time of Mary, Joseph, John the Baptist, and Jesus, this has been the ancestral homeland of the Jews. Please stay tuned for the ICEJ report from the International Christian Embassy, Jerusalem. יש יום בינלאומי, כי זה טראומה עולמית. זה לא יהודים רק נפגעו, כל העולם נפגע מזה. אנחנו רוצים שלא ישכחו שהייתה שואה, ואם אנחנו לא נציין את זה, אז אף אחד לא יזכור יותר. אז זה יום שלא יחזור כבר אף פעם לעולם. אף פעם. So I survived the Nazi murder machine, and I feel that I'm a living miracle, that I'm standing here and talking to you. אנחנו כיהודים עברנו את השואה בצורה קשה וניצולי שואה מהבית החם שכולם חוו את השואה במצב קשה מגיעים לבית הנשיא זה בשבילהם מין כזה סגירת מעגל שלפני 70 שנה לא היה לנו מדינה ולא היה מי שישמור עלינו והיום יש להם את מי שישמור עליהם ויש מדינה כבוד הנשיא נכנס מרגישה משהו נפלא, הרבה גאווה ומאוד שמחה שיש לנו את המדינה ואת הנשיא. יקיריי, לכל אחד ואחת מכן סיפור משלו, סיפור טבח, טבח בני משפחה וקהילה, סיפור פליטות ופחד, סיפור הצלה ותקומה. אך יותר מהסיפור האישי האינדיבידואלי, זהו סיפור של דור שלם, דור שנחלץ מתאומות הרוע ובחר בחיים, דור של גבורה ועשייה, דור שתרם לחברה הישראלית בכל תחומי החיים. ההיאחזות, ההיאחזות שלכם בחיים, 
חרף המסע, מסע הזיכרון הכואב, היא המסר שאותה, שאותו אתם נושאים מאז ועד היום. אני מאחל לכם שנים ארוכות, שמחות ובריאות, שבהן נזכה להגיד פעם אחר פעם את המילים האלו, שהחיינו וקיימנו והגיענו לזמן הזה. היו ברוכים אנשים יקרים. היו ברוכים. תודה רבה. אני רוצה שכל היהודים מכל העולם יבואו אלינו פה. פה זה המדינה שלנו, אין לנו לאן ללכת. שלעולם, לעולם לא יהיה דבר כזה. הדור הצעיר צריך לשמור שלא ייווצרו מקומות של שואה, לא אצל היהודים, בפרט בעולם. היי, hey, אני חושב שזה הדבר הטוב שאלוהים עשה ב... בינינו, החיבור, זה אני חושב שיש פה יד אלוהים. אין לי ספק שללא השגרירות הנוצרית לא יכלנו להקים את הבית החם לניצולי שואה ואני חושב שאתם חלק אינטגרלי בסיוע הכספי, באהבה, במתנדבים. אני חושב שאין דבר יותר טוב ממה שאתם עושים לניצולי שואה וכולכם יודעים שניצולי שואה אנחנו נוצרים בחמש או העשר שנים האחרונות שאפשר לעזור לאותו ניצולי שואה That's all for this edition of Israel Now News. I'm Yochanan El Rome. And I'm Erin Viner reporting from our studio in Jerusalem. Please join us again next week for all of your Israel updates.